This is a bolt, one of many billions that literally hold our modern society together. Due to its design, it has an unfortunate weakness. When it is exposed to vibration, it can loosen. Will it be this bolt? Or this one? Or this one? It is impossible to know for sure. It all depends on the securing technology that is used and what it can withstand. Because vibration is everywhere and vibration can loosen bolted joints. Hello dear students and after understanding thoroughly about the riveted connections, now we come to the bolted connections. And if we look in any sphere of our life, we encounter bolted connections everywhere. Uh, we have seen nut and bolts from our childhood itself. So in bolted connection, it mainly consists of bolt and a bolt has a sank like rivet with a head at one end and threading done at the other end. And it also has a nuts and washers. Now along with nuts and bolts, what is the use of washers? Generally people think that washers is used in the case when the diameter of bolt is less than the diameter of hole. But this is not the only use. Washer is also used to distribute the clamping pressure on the bolted member. Okay. So this will become very clear when I will show you the diagram. Okay. How we distribute the pressure because when you tied the bolt from the bottom what happens if you use the washer washer will distribute the pressure on a larger area okay and it also is used to prevent the threaded portion so just like you have seen in the video how the uh, bolted connection is uh, difficult to perform when the members are subjected to vibrations okay so in those cases, what we can do, we can lock the nuts. Now there are procedures of locking the nuts. I will show you in the diagram also how to lock the nuts as we go forward in this video. So what are the advantages of bolted connections over riveted connections? And we can erect with great speed in case of bolted connection in comparison with the riveted connection. Because there is no case of hammering or heating and that's why the bolted connection requires less skilled persons okay and uh, anybody can do this okay and the overall costs of bolted connections is less in comparison to the riveted connection now why although the bolts are costlier than the rivets this is because there is reduction in the cost of labor and the equipment. For riveted connection, we require heating in case of hot riveting and we require rivet guns and skilled labors in case of cold riveting. And also with that we require hammering also. So overall cost decreases. Now there are few objections on the use of bolts because the cost of bolt is higher than the cost of rivet. This is because the bolts are made of good quality material and over that the bolts also are threaded at one end. So that also increases the cost and the tensile strength of bolt is less than the tensile strength of rivet. This is another issue with the bolts. Okay. Why? Because in the bolts we do threading and threading is done with the lathe machine if you have visited the mechanical laboratories at the basements there you encounter many lathe machines and in the lathe machines we do threading on the bolts as well as on the nuts now for doing threading on the bolts if we do in the clockwise direction threading then on the nuts we have to do the same magnitude of threading in anti-clockwise direction all right then only the nut and bolt will be compatible to each other okay and due to threading what happens that there is reduction in the sank area okay so if we consider sank area of the bolt 
as the gross area then the threaded area which is less than sank area becomes the net area okay so due to reduction in area of cross section due to threading the tensile strength decreases in case of bolt and as we have seen in the video that bolted connection may lose if the steel members are subjected to vibrations and shocks like in the case of bridges decks and in case of uh, lifts or in case of uh, heavy machineries all right so for making bolted connection we have to make holes also and holes are made by two process either we can do holes by drilling or we can make holes by punching but punching is relatively simpler than drilling and it also saves time and cost but there is reduction in ductility and toughness but the punching is permitted as per the indian standard codes in given conditions all right so there are different types of bolted connections like there are different types of riveted connections and as we have seen there are lap joint and butt joint so similar kind of joints will also come under the heading of bolted connections but here i have written few more types of classification based on resultant force transferred okay the connection can be concentric connection now in simple term concentric means uh, the force is passing through the center of gravity of the section now what type of joint do you remember the butt joint where the two plates are aligned along the same axial line and when we apply the force then forces are concurrent isn't it and such a type of joint becomes the concentric joint the next type of bolted connection is the eccentric connection and the example of eccentric connection is the lap joint in which the load is away from the center of gravity of connection and the distance between the two forces was the distance e e was called as eccentricity and due to which there was development of moments which was trying to rotate the joints in clockwise direction so such a joint was called as eccentric connection and in case of channels and brackets also there will be development of eccentric type of bolted connections now in concentric connection moment is equal to 0 whereas in eccentric connection moment is equal to p times e now the next type of bolted connection is the moment resisting bolted connection in these type of joints although they will be subjected to some moment which is not equal to 0 but the joints will be self sufficient to resist the moments like in the case of beam column connections and how do they resist they resist by forming the rigid joint and at the rigid joints moment is resisted by the beam and the column together now the bolted connections are also classified on the basis of type of force transfer see this is very important to understand the force transfer mechanism because unless you understand it it will be very difficult to do the numerical problems so you should be very clear that how the forces are being transferred in the connections especially in bolted connections most of the times people are confused which formula to use okay so try to understand there are only three type of connections and in all those three type of connections you have to apply different formulas to analyze now the first type of connection is the shear connection second type of connection is the tension connections and the third type is the combination of one and two that is combined shear and tension connections now in the first type of connection which is the shear connections load is transferred through development of shear forces along the planes of the bolts okay as well as the development of bearing stresses inside the plane of the bolts so there are development of two types of stresses in shear connection one is the shear stress and other is the bending stress okay so we have to apply formula of shear stress and bending stress in shear type of connections now what are the examples of shear type of connections 
दे आर द लैप ज्वाइंट एंड द बट ज्वाइंट ओके सो द नेक्स्ट टाइप ऑफ कनेक्शन इज द टेंशन कनेक्शन एंड टेंशन कनेक्शन आर दो कनेक्शन इन विच द लोड इज ट्रांसफर्ड बाय डेवलपमेंट ऑफ टेंसाइल फोर्सेस इन द बोल्ड एन एग्जाम्पल फॉर सच अ टाइप ऑफ कनेक्शन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इज द हैंगिंग ऑफ अ प्रोजेक्टर थ्रू द सीलिंग इन अ क्लास रूम सो इन दोज हैंगर कनेक्शन लोड इज ट्रांसफर्ड बाई डेवलपमेंट ऑफ टेंसाइल फोर्सेस ऑन द बोल्ड ओके सो यू हैव टू अप्लाई हियर द फॉर्मूला ऑफ टेंसाइल स्ट्रेस ओनली ओके Do not use any other formula in second type of connections. Okay, so this should be very clear to you. Now the third type of connection is the combined shear and tension connections. So in these type of connections, actually the member is inclined, or the forces are inclined, either of the two. Okay, so in those cases. not only there is development of shear stress and bending stress but there is also development of tensile stress so in this third type of connection we have to apply all the three formulas okay whether it is the shear stress or it is the bending stress or it is the tensile stress all right so all these three types of formula has to applied in the third type of connections so understanding of this concept will only make you competent in doing the numerical problems all right now there are two types of bolts the first one is the unfinished bolt and second one is the high strength friction grip bolt so understanding of both these two types of bolts is very very important so unfinished bolts are also known as ordinary bolts or rough bolts or black bolts okay so they are used for connecting light structures for static see static means those type of loads which are almost fixed not the dynamic load okay and they are also used for connecting secondary members like purlins bracings process etc so the unfinished bolts are not suitable for vibrations and fatigue as we have seen in the video that unfinished bolts start getting loose in the situation of vibrations or shocks here fatigue refers to the repeated loading like in the case of bridge decks there is a high magnitude of load in the day time and the load is very less in the night time so the unfinished bolts are not suitable in those situations because these unfinished bolts are made from mild steel rods forged from low carbon steel very low carbon steel okay so the strength of the alloy from which it is made is not very high it's mild steel up to the range of 250 megapascal yield strength like that okay so in these bolts uh, there is shank as well as there is head now the shape of head can be square or it can be hexagonal hexagonal is costly but it has a better appearance and better working conditions now these bolts are available in market from diameter 5 mm to 36 mm and hence these bolts are designated like m5 to m36 now when i say m5 or m36 it doesn't means like uh, m20 m30 m40 of concrete in case of concrete m30 m refers to the mix and 30 refers to the compressive strength of concrete cube after 28 days of curing but in case of bolts don't get confused like that but in case of bolts m30 refers to the bolt which has a shank diameter equal to 30 mm that's all so in a structural steel generally bolts are used as m16 m20 m24 and m30 all right so this means uh, 16 mm diameter bolt 20 mm diameter bolt 24 mm diameter bolt 30 mm diameter bolt like this all right 
Now this diameter of bolt is the sank diameter okay and there is threading diameter or the net diameter. So there are two types of diameter in bolted connection. One is the gross diameter okay and other is the net diameter. Net diameter is basically in the threading portion okay whereas the gross diameter is in the sank region and the area corresponding to the gross diameter is equal to gross area which is equal to pi d square by 4 okay and the area corresponding to the net diameter is represented by a n now what is the value of net area this is the question okay now the net area is calculated with help of this ratio you see this ratio ratio of net tensile area to the nominal plane sank area is 0 0.78 as per the is 1367 so it says an by az is equal to 0 0.78 so net area will be equal to 0 0.78 pi d square by 4 so this ratio you have to remember this is very very important now as per the is 800 net tensile area is considered at the root called stress area or proof area so what is this root root is this now this is the root which you are seeing between two threaded region is the root okay and at the root we consider that diameter and that become the net tensile area but we do not know what is the diameter there so we take help of this ratio okay now the bolts are also designated in terms of its strength like you have seen in the cement we have also done a designation like grade 33 grade 43 grade 53 so in case of bolt also we have done some grading and there are grade a point b now what does it mean when i say grade a point b so it means that there is ultimate strength of bolt and there is some yield strength of bolt here the letter f represents strength okay and u represents ultimate b represents bolt and y represents yield so these notations must be clear to you okay so ultimate strength of bolt will be equal to 100 times a okay and this is in unit mega pascal now what is the yield strength of bolt yield strength of bolt will be equal to 0 point b multiplied by f u b and this is in unit mega pascal now this may be appearing difficult to you but when I do a small example like if this is the grade of the bolt grade 4.6 now the ultimate strength of bolt is the 100 times 4 this 4 and it will come out as the 400 mega pascal okay this is the F U B what is the yield strength of bolt fyb fyb will be equal to 0 0.6 multiplied by fub okay and it will come out as 0 0.6 multiplied by 400 that will give you the value 240 mega pascal so these are the two values of strength of bolt like you have studied in the stress strain curve of a steel that there are two values of strength one is the yield strength of bolt and another is the ultimate strength of bolt so we are talking of these two values of strength this is the f y b and this value of strength is the f u b ultimate strength of bolt all right so these things must be very clear to you now the next point says there is not significant clamping stress developing in unfinished bolt see this clamping stress is very very important in case of high strength friction grip bolt 
बिकॉज फोर्स ट्रांसफर मेकेनिज्म इज बाई फ्रिक्शन इन दैट केस बट इन केस ऑफ अनफिनिश्ड बोल्ट द फोर्स इज ट्रांसफर्ड नॉट थ्रू द फ्रिक्शन और क्लैंपिंग स्ट्रेस बट बाई द इंटरलॉकिंग और सीयर एंड बियरिंग सो दीज टाइप ऑफ ज्वाइंट्स विच इज मेड बाय द अनफिनिश्ड बोल्ट आर कॉल्ड सीयर टाइप ऑफ ज्वाइंट्स और बियरिंग टाइप ऑफ जॉइंट्स ओके लाइक लैब जॉइंट्स और बर्ड जॉइंट्स एंड देयर वी यूज टू फार्मूलाज वन इज ऑफ सीयर स्ट्रेस एंड अदर इज ऑफ बेंडिंग स्ट्रेस ऑल राइट सो हेयर इज द पिक्चर ऑफ अ बोल्ट एंड यू कैन सी दिस इज द हेड ऑफ द बोल्ट ओके एंड इन दिस केस द हेड इज ऑफ हेक्सागोनल सेप ऑल राइट and this entire length of bolt is called as the nominal length out of nominal length few portion is threaded okay so till that we call it thread length and uh, beyond threading there is grip length and the grip length we grip the steel members okay and on threading the nut can run through okay and nut will run out at this boundary okay so this boundary is called run out and this is the nut nut will also have the similar type of shape as per the head if the head is of a square shape then the nut also has to be of square shape here the head is in hexagonal shape nut is also in hexagonal shape okay in this diagram if you see here the head is of square shape you see this square diagram okay so the nut also is of a square shape okay so this is an example of ordinary square head bolt whereas this is the example of ordinary hexagonal head bolt now this reason is called sank okay this plain reason grip length and this reason is called threading so sank diameter is the gross diameter d and area corresponding to sank is equal to ag so area corresponding to threading will be a net and ratio of a net and az is equal to 0.78 okay so here you see the head of the bolt and this is the steel washers so these washers distributes the clamping pressure over the steel members you see this it is distributing the pressure over a larger area the larger is the washer larger is the distribution of pressure and here you also see a term grip and grip is the distance till which the steel member are gripped okay now focus yourself on this diagram of bolt and here i have shown you a cassellated nut and this type of nut is a self locking nut in case of vibrations shocks and uh, uh, fatigue so in these type of bolts what do we use is the cassellated nut and in that there is a hole provided you see this hole in the nut and there is also a hole in the bolt also okay so there is hole in this bolt also and through these two holes we use a cotter pin this cotter pin is used to lock the nut and bolt together in case of vibrations so this is a way of locking the nuts in case of vibrations all right so this was about the bolts threading nuts grip shape of the head and uh, locking of the nuts in case of vibration now we come to the type of hole see for making bolted connections the holes had to be punched or drilled now there are four types of hole as per the is code now the first type of hole is the standard type of hole and this is the most common type of hole everywhere we can see it now you see this is the hole the outer circle is the hole and beneath that you see this black circle and this is the bolt okay so it is very clear that diameter of hole 
is larger than the diameter of bolt so in this case diameter of hole is represented by d naught and is equal to diameter of bolt plus 2 now this diameter of bolt is the sank diameter which is obtained from the m10 m12 m16 m20 m30 like this so in most of the numericals we will use this formula only to calculate the diameter of hole for example if we have m16 bolt so diameter of hole d naught will be equal to 16 plus 2 is equal to 18 mm and this value of diameter of hole will be used for calculation all right unless the type of hole is given we are going to use this formula only now the second type of hole is the oversized hole and in this you see the size of hole is oversized than the diameter of bolt this is the bolt uh, sank diameter okay and this is the hole diameter in this case diameter of hole is equal to diameter of bolt plus 4 mm so in this case we put 1 mm here and 1 mm here in this case we put 2 mm here and 2 mm here extra all right now the third type of hole is the short slotted hole this type of hole is similar to the standard type of hole but there is overlapping of two holes okay why this overlapping of holes is provided just to have a few degree of freedom along one axis okay and the fourth type of hole is the long slotted hole and in that the hole is like this in that case we can move our bolt from here to here just like in our homes if you look at the setup of dth or television if you look at their backs, uh, the bolted connection are provided with long slotted hole and they are not just in linear direction. There can be a long slot hole as much as like this. So that we can rotate our DTH from this point even up to this or if required we can move up to this. Alright, so we can move the bolted connection from this point to this point to this point so by this we not only make our joint tight but we also provide a little freedom of movement towards a certain profile all right or the path which is required as per the system so in those cases we provide short slotted or long slotted otherwise in most of the numerical problems we will be confining ourselves to the standard type of hole now the next type of bolt is the high strength friction grip bolt now as the name suggests these bolts are made from medium carbon heat treated steel not the low carbon heat treated steel so of course such an alloy of a steel will have high strength all right so they are tightened until they have very high tensile stress okay so clamping stress is higher in hsfg bolt so the tensile stress is almost twice the ordinary bolts okay and the load is registered only at the high stress when will the high stress come when we apply high loading then to resist that high loading high stress will develop in the member and at that high stress load will be registered by these hsfg bolt and this high value of stress is called proof load proof load is represented by f naught in the is code okay now connected parts are clamped together and the load is primarily transferred by friction here not the shear okay now we are not going to use the formula of shear or bearing or tensile stresses nothing is going to be used here we are only going to use the formula of friction here 
so the formula for hsfg is given in the is code and that we will discuss very soon and these type of bolts are also known as friction bolts okay so the load transfer mechanism is by friction only so we have to avoid the slip in this case and for that surfaces to be connected must be free from any kind of rust paints and grease these type of hsfg bolt due to their high strength friction grip they are in better performance in case of vibration and impacts all right similar to the ordinary bolts they are also designated and are available in in diameter range from 5 mm to 36 mm and similar kind of designation is here and in terms of a strength these bolts are also designated as 8.8s 10.9s and this is written at the cap of bolt or the head of bolt and 8.8s means ultimate stress will be equal to 800 mega pascal and yield stress will be equal to 640 mega pascal okay so how do we get it we have just multiplied 8 with 100 and we got fub and uh, to get fyb we have multiplied 0.8 with fub and we have got 640 mega pascal and you need not to see this line this is just for uh, more practical reason in ideal cases and this is also for the ideal cases okay now what are the advantages of high strength bolt there is no slip between elements connected so the joint formation is rigid joint and rigid joints can resist moment very easily in beam columns also and of course the connection will have high strength there is no chances of shearing or bearing failure because the force transfer mechanism is by friction no stress concentration in hole more fatigue strength uniform tensile stress in bolt no loosening in bolts less man power compared to rivets and cost saving less noise nuisance less number of bolts are required as compared to rivets why because the bolts are of high strength and even few bolts are sufficient to resist the load in comparison with many rivets all right so the design of hsfg bolts and the unfinished bolts we will be studying from the is code also in the upcoming videos so till that stay tuned and stay safe thank you